may be increased by a factor of 10 or more. Um, we, uh, within the next uh, few uh, months, there will be an article coming out in Science from Clay Reed's group, where he has now done a complete connectomic reconstruction of a cubic millimeter of the cortex that contains about a billion synapses. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a goldmine for doing an analysis. And one of the, the early things that they did was to replicate a finding that uh, uh, my group uh, collaboration with uh, Chris and Harris did in the hippocampus CA1. We, we showed that if you have a single axon making two synaptic contacts on the same dendrite, that the strengths of the synapses as judged by this, the volume of the postsynaptic spine was very, very close, which means that uh, the, the, the precision of synaptic plasticity must be, uh, you know, very, very uh, highly, highly, highly precise, despite the fact that there's so much variability in the in, in, incoming inputs and the probability of release. So um, that was replicated now in the cortex. So, uh, so we, we, you know, this is probably, it, it means that the precision of synaptic plasticity is, is uh, giving us uh, is much higher than anybody could have guessed earlier uh, on the basis of the variability in sizes of synapses and so forth. Um, so the last thing I want to tell you about is uh, a, a, a grant that uh, my lab got from uh, with uh, Claudia Leineshek in my lab. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, going to have a big impact on the world of epilepsy. So as you know, epilepsy is very debilitating. It, it really affects you know, millions of individuals. And it's, the problem is you don't know when you're going to have a seizure. And it, you know, so you're really constrained. It really changes your lifestyle. Uh, and and you're, of course, the drugs that are given are, are themselves uh, really knock you out. So it's, it's a really tough problem. Uh, now, uh, if, uh, if you have a drug resistant form of epilepsy, there are many forms, uh, then the, the last resort is to go in and implant electrodes and find out where the focus of the seizure is. And, and, uh, and that may take a couple of weeks. It's a very highly invasive operation and it requires, you know, you to open the scalp and you put in your electrodes, a grid of electrodes. And, and um, you know, it's very, it's, it's, somebody even mentioned this, uh, that's very painful so that they're given, uh, uh, you know, painkillers and, 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 and it's, it's just scary. Everything's scary about it. So, but the, uh, the goal is that there'll be seizures and then you'll be able to, the surgeon will go in and, and under many, uh, in, in many cases, you can alleviate or if not eliminate uh, the seizures. Now, the, 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 for, for us, for you know, the scientists, uh, that gives us literally weeks of recording from typically 100 uh, recording sites in the brain, sometimes with depth electrodes in the hippocampus and elsewhere. So, uh, it, you know, incredible uh, opportunity here. And, and, and one of the things we discovered uh, during sleep was that the sleep spindles are traveling waves. And this has now been replicated in babies and in, uh, now in rats. So th this is uh, this a different uh, dynamic, spatial and temporal coherence across the cortex. But uh, the, what I want to tell you about is that analyzing the seizures with a new analytic technique that uh, Claudia has developed called de delayed differential analysis, or DDA, and then, uh, and then augmenting that with a new method, which uh, is, is uh, based on ergodic, dynamic ergodicity. And I'm not going to go into the details except to say that it, it's very much a, a way to separate out the causal signals from just the correlations. Okay, So if you combine DDA and this er dynamic ergodicity, you come up with a, a measure that not only is able to show you how different parts of the cortex are, are flow, information is flowing between the cortex. But it turns out that you can actually identify the uh, onset uh, electrodes. And this, this is what the, what the uh, neurosurgeons and the neurologists are, are, are looking for. You know, wh where does it start? But we can actually identify those minutes and hours in some cases before the seizure with 100% confidence. And, and, and you know, a lot of people have been working on this and, and the, most of the tools and techniques that have been used have not been uh, nearly as, as uh, se selective or predictive. And uh, we're in the process right now, we have uh, 200 patients, we have data from 200 patients from MGH with Sid Cash, 
our collaborator. Uh, and if, if this pans out, there, there's many different types of epilepsy and in many different uh, you know, parts of the cortex that are, are communicating. And there's a generalized epilepsy where it spreads across you know, the hemispheres. So this is you know, the early days. But I think that if this is true, that means that one of the things is advances in uh, analytic tools and techniques that can help us extract out from the, these very large and very complex data sets, uh, something fundamental about not just, you know, when the, the, the cortex, something goes wrong in the cortex, which is uh, the, the epilepsy project, but during normal behavior, uh, when the information is flowing back and forth between different parts of the cortex during tasks. Uh, and that's all become, it's all become available, I think, as a consequence of the fact that we made this $5 billion investment in tools and techniques We've accelerated discovery by, I think, by a factor of 10. It, it may have taken 50 years to get to the point where you can record from a million neurons at the same time. And now it's, we're, we can look through the, through the, through the lenses. You know, it's, it's like a, a, a computational microscope now to go in to the brain and be able to observe all the activity that's going on. And by the way, it's, it's uh, happening across many species. Uh, you know, we can record from the majority of neurons now, both in the zebrafish and the fly brain. Uh, Ralph Greenspan's lab has, uh, has accomplished that for the, uh, for the fly. And, uh, and, and now, you know, we're, we're living in a different uh, period for understanding very co the complexity of the brain. And, uh, you know, I, I really expect that uh, over the next five years that uh, this will spread through all of uh, the labs and, 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 and you know, especially with the, um, the new tools that are available. Uh, Gerald Pau I see is here and, and he has a, a new tool, convergent cross mapping that also looks very promising. So there, there's just a lot of really exciting new experiments that we can do and analytic techniques that are gonna really be uh, opening up whole new views of, of how, how to understand brain function. Okay, well, uh, thank you all for uh, sticking around. I, I think that we've had a, a very rich, uh, you know, in, incredibly uh, diverse group of, of talks and speakers, and I want to thank all of them. Uh, I want to thank uh, especially the team from KIBM who uh, helped us put together a lot of the uh, the 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 the, the uh, Event, uh, Eventbrite and uh, all of the uh, organization behind it and, uh, and the people who helped us with the Zoom. And, and uh, you know, I, th I think that this tradition that we've had, which has uh, gone back, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's even, even beyond 17 years when KIBM, I think, uh, started. I think we started a little bit earlier than that, like 20 years ago. Uh, and, and looking back and seeing where all of our fellows have gone, it has been exciting because a lot of them now are now become directors of their own institutes and have pioneered whole new areas of, of cognitive neuroscience. So uh, I'm really proud of all, of all of them. Okay, well, thank you all. And I hope you have a good evening. And uh, I hope to see you back in person one of these days. And Eric, do you wanna end up with a... Uh...